strong church. We speak about a foundation of a strong church. Uh, the reason is simple. The reason is simple because uh, God wants to uh, bring a totally different foundation that will heal the land of absurdity. You know, when God wants to bring anything to the people in an environment, he does not use the government of Kenya. He will always use the people that he raises to heal a land. In every generation, God has somebody that he has appointed. Even in the Bible, you see, after a long period of time when people are through a lot of problems, God raises someone. Moses was raised as a cry of many Israelites in the land of Egypt. And when you look at Moses, uh, I know my friend might wonder what topic I'm speaking on. I'm speaking on about, I'm talking about a pastor. Who is a pastor? You can assume that you know. And I don't know. I know you don't. Who is a pastor? That's the ministry I want to speak about. Amen. It's hard to speak about yourself, yeah? But let's speak it. We are just reading. Pasi, nini pasi. Luga enu imekua too much. Pasi. But you want to see, what does it mean? Or who's a pastor as far as the Bible is concerned? Uh, in our previous teachings, I have tried to bring some foundation on that. How God called Peter and it is a strong Peter. On this rock I'll build my, my church. And the, the building, the, the rock that Jesus was speaking about was himself. He is the rock. And Peter got interested in what Jesus has, which is the word of God. And because he desired to follow Jesus, and in fact, specifically what he wanted is the word of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus. And even some of the questions that his colleagues that were called together to follow Jesus could not answer like for example, who am I, he asked. At that moment, I don't think that other disciples didn't know that Jesus is Messiah. They knew, but they didn't have the gut. Gut is simply inner energy to do something. They didn't have strength on the inside to confess that Jesus is Messiah because the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and other Seas, if they're there, they were seriously like against anybody who can call Jesus a Messiah. You fear for your life because you'll be killed. And Peter was confident and he can say, you the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And because he understood Jesus, and he could boldly confess, and he's always fast to learn from Jesus, he was given the, the, the responsibility to look after the church. I think we talked about that at length. Now he has been made a pastor of the church. Our Anchor verse is the book of Acts chapter number the book of Acts chapter number 2. We are looking at that. We are looking at that. Acts chapter number 2 verse 42. We have begun from verse 41. The Bible says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. 
and the same day there were added unto them about 300,000 sorry, 300 souls no thousands, no 300 3,000 souls I hope you are hearing well and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teachings. We spoke so much about apostles' teaching last week. And fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers, verse 46, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. But forces and all that believed were together and all things common. But forces and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men so as every man had needs. But six says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat the meat with gladness and singleness of heart Bible says in verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved so uh, that is about that chapter now one thing that you observe there the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles teaching apostles teaching uh, one of the things that God has given to us pastors is the teaching of the word of God Now let's look at chapter number 4 of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse I'll begin from somewhere up there. Might be from verse 9. Let me begin from verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, he says, to every one of us is given grace. Now, I want you to look at that word grace. The word grace. The word grace is talking about the ability to do something. Can I repeat that? Grace, the word grace means the ability to give to uh, to do something. He says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now every one of us has been gifted differently. The gift that you have been given, God also has given you ability to deliver that gift. Are we together? Hmm? What is happening there? So, we are saying God has given grace. I want you to look at this because at some point I'll come back to that word grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every person who is born again, there is a gift that has been put in them. And for that gift to happen, God gives you grace. The grace we are talking about is the ability To deliver the gift. To do what you are asked to do. Then it says in verse 8. Wherefore he says. When he ascended up on high. He led captivity captive. And, he, and gave gifts unto men. When he ascended on high. Who is that? Jesus. He led captivity captives. And gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what it is but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. That's when he died on the cross and was buried. He that descended 
is the sin also that has seen it up far above all heavens that he might feel all things now the same Jesus who died went beneath them. when the Bible talks about down there it is talking about hell really descended where is hell hell is down there the devil says God says heaven is up hell is Jesus went to hell when he died on the cross in other words he has all the experience he has the experience of hell and he has the experience of this earth and he has the experience of heaven so if you want to learn from somebody I think Jesus should be the one who has been in heaven was been on earth and also went where he also went and he went where the devil is the, the Satan himself is and the Bible says in verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers he says he gave some now the original Greek doesn't talk about as he gave some he doesn't say he gave he, the original Greek says he gave men as gifts not only men also women are there amen hey. if you are a woman just know that you have a woman otherwise you are just a man amen that's what differentiates. That's why you're called a woman. It's the womb that has given you a different one. So, when the Bible here says men, are there women or pastors? Yes. Yeah. So, if he says he gives, he gave men as gifts. The, the original version talks about he gave men or women, women as gifts. And what are these? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now, uh, Dennis, I want you to observe what is happening today. I want to know this, how this thing is like hanging sometimes there. I don't know if it is the web, the, the, the internet. I'm seeing that sometimes it's hanging. What is wrong with it? Maybe we'll see. So we are talking about uh, he gave men as gift. An apostle is a gift that God gave to the church. A prophet is a gift that God gave to the church. And an evangelist is a gift. We're not talking about evangelist. We're not talking about evangelists like what we have in our churches. That is not the definition of the Bible. Like I appoint one person to be an evangelist and uh, like some churches do. Those are the kind of evangelists we are talking about. We are talking about men like men who fill stadium. When they stand there, the lame are walking. Mm -hmm. The blind see. The other one is The blind, the deaf here. Now, we, we brought Ben Isaac here in October. Ben Isaac is an evangelist. His power is too much for a house like this. That day when he came here, all sick people that came, all of them got healed. All. I'm saying all. All of them got healed. That guy is an evangelist. And the evangelists uh, operate with power gifts. When you talk about power gifts, you're talking about the ability to, to cause signs and wonders to happen. A best example of evangelist, you find it in chapter number 8 of the book of Acts. So, and then we have pastors and teachers 
these are they have been given he says in verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and and teachers why does he give them these gifts verse 24 for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Number one reason as to why God gave this gift is to perfect the saints. What is perfecting? You always say, no one is perfect. Have you ever said that? Yes, God also knows that. And he has given you a pastor to perfect you. So the ministry of a pastor is and all those people is to perfect you in your spiritual work with God. Is to correct your habits and characters and behaviors and to teach you more so that you mature. Perfection, that word perfect simply talks about coming to a point of maturity. Hmm? The word perfect means is to grow you until you mature spiritually. That's the first thing. God expects all of us who are born again to grow and mature. Number two, we are told for the work of ministry. For the work of all of us are to serve in the house of God. All of us. Whether you are a preacher, whether you are a singer, whether you are an usher, which other ministry? Huh? Whether you are a teacher, even a teacher is everybody in the house of God. Whether you are playing keyboard, nobody should sit and do nothing in the church. Everybody must be given some work to do. And as we are point out, as we are putting forth leaders next week, we realize that everybody belongs somewhere. Amen. You have said you have sat enough. Now we engage you. Amen. <laughs> Just for here. For the work of the ministry. And then they say, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, if all of us mature, now imagine a moment, uh, a scenario of this kind, where all of you have matured spiritually. All of you. I'm saying all of you have matured spiritually. And all of you are serving God with their gifts. How strong will the church be? Three reasons. After you, just like when we were born, you know, we were taken to school. After we were taken to school, then after you get a job, your parents will also at some point expect something from you. They expect. And also, you also think of supporting your government. By the service you do. So you are a resource both to yourself, to your family, to your community. In the church, also the same. As we grow you spiritually, what we expect is we can work. You can be given some work to do to serve God in the church. And your service. The work you do for God makes you a very important person that builds the work of the house of God. So if everybody of us in this church, if you take responsibility in a specific area, how will the church be? The church will be very strong. Every one of us serving in different capacities. So the three reasons as to why a pastor exists 
I'm trying to give three reasons. It's to perfect you in your faith. Reaching a point where you can understand the word of God 100% concerning all issues of life. You are not ignorant in any area of the word of God. And you function well in line with what the word of God says. And for me, I have enough teaching. I can teach the whole day. The whole week. That's why we are teaching three times a day in this place. Even today is three times. Monday three times. Tuesday three times. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Saturday. Friday is in fact four times. Because we have cash. All these teachings is for building you up so that you become complete in Jesus. And then you mature. Just like you see You'll only be allowed to get married because you're mature. Sometimes boys try to get married to girls. <laughs> boys. <laughs> I remember sometimes back, those some years ago. There's a kuna kijana walienda Kariobangi. Wale wana wana sijiona do you know what they do at the Karibani? They go with dealing with that thing. And then, in fact, the guy is just at the Nona Emmanuel Church in Yuma. Nyumbayao ni ikopale. Because, uh, and it's like, uh, how many years ago? Like 14, 15 years ago. So, when he went for that thing, he he's a very small boy. <laughs> And then the other, I, I, I don't know. Then he got a lady, a girl on the other side. Both of them were small. And they said, I will marry you. <laughs> so he came with her here. They didn't stay even for three months. Does he have capacity to? And today he's married to somebody different. And he has kids. That's why sometimes you want to, boys want to have a marriage. It's not possible. It's the same also when we talk about uh, uh, when, when you are in the church, one of the things we expect of each one of you is to mature so that you reach a point where you can be dependent. You can only be dependent when you yourself have ability to keep your house well and you don't have any problem. You are mature. Your wife is mature. Both of you, you know when people mature, they respect each other. When they are not, not mature, wana to kanana. Have you seen a husband and wife fighting? Mujinga we. Sare. Mumbwa. Husband and wife. And some are even very old. Attend that. At the man who said. You want to any man? Huh? Those are boys and girls in a grown-up world. Yes. You know, you can, you can, your age can, has, can, ha, can be, has gone so much and then you're still immature. Yeah. Increasing in age is not a proof that you have matured. Although those are many times, you know, wakitona to me, People look at or because they work on a on a job. How many people on their own are machine to manage their marriage and may break? So many. The church deeds with such kind of state of affairs of the people. And it grows you up to a point where you know, I said maturity is having ability to stay with everybody in the area, irrespective of how some are difficult, huh? how some are dangerous, how some cannot be 
But with all these people, you can stay without being offended or offending somebody. That's maturity. Where there is no conflict. Ukiona tu mtu ameanza kuzumbua mtu. Kila mtu analia kuhusu mtu fulani. Ako hivi. Bring them for me here. Amen. I'm saying bring them. <laughs> I know what to do with them. As they sit and listen, the word of God will turn their life around. So, perfecting, that's what I'm talking about, perfecting. And that's why we need you here every day. Because we want to teach you the word of God. And you know one thing that you must know is, God cannot help you without his word. I want you to recognize this. Every time you are running from hearing the word of God, you are putting yourself in trouble. God will only help you by developing you. I want to repeat that. When you appear in his presence, you will grow. You will mature. You will have right perspective about everything. The best way that God will help you is to mature you. Reaching a level where you can handle anything. I'm saying. For example, sickness. God wants you to grow to a point where sickness cannot sit in your body. Are we together? And you have ability. God is not so much pleased with healing you. Hmm? God is so much pleased with healing you. He wants you to stay without sickness. Because he knows you can stay without sickness. And how can you stay without sickness? He has to develop your faith, mature your thinking, so that you rise above. That's the level God wants you to reach. You are needy, you want help. Yeah, God can give somebody to help you. But God wants you to support yourself. And it's not a point where nobody can help you, but you can easily meet your needs. The best way God can help you is to mature you. And the teaching that you hear in this place, in this church, Whichever teaching is a teaching that will raise your level above the issues that is disturbing common people. People can sit in church for 40 years and still be babies and still be crying and still be crying of all this. Now, I have just given you some of the responsibility of a pastor. If you read verse 16, this is the ultimate thing that we want to see. Verse 16 of the same chapter, chapter number 4 of Ephesians. Verse 16. That is the ultimate. The point where, where God wants you to arrive. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 16. He says, from whom, let me speak, begin from verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. Grow up in him in the word all is applying everywhere. In all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to effectual working in the measure of every part. Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. He says you, you need to reach a point where everybody is mature and everybody is giving to the body and the body is being built up by what everybody is supplying. Hey, I don't want you to grow in all things 
And then he says, after each one of us have grown, and every one of us will begin uh, giving body. And whatever each one of us gives to the body makes the body strong and they grow in love. Like for example, consider in a family where husband and wife is there and the children are there. Talk of if all the children, like six of them, seven of them, eight, whichever number, if all of them get a job, and then they come together, sit as a family. You know, December after Christmas, there's always family meetings. And all of them, because they have grown, they have resources, and even when they sit together with the parents and discuss, they can make that family more stronger. I hope you're getting me. That family becomes stronger. Anything needed, everybody can supply. The family is sufficient. Even when a problem comes in, everybody can do what? God wants a church to be like that. Where each and every one of you, after you mature, you give back to the body and you build the body. And the body is not really about this church only. The body is every born again that person who is in Marsabit County. Our ministry goes to them. Every born again, everywhere we can minister to the body of Christ, people, whether they are of this church or not, that's why we are on radio every Saturday. That's why we are going to all high schools around. We are building the body of Christ in the whole county. So we are being like next Saturday we have a meeting if many of the people that we are, we are looking for will be available. And we want to see the whole day discuss this year. How are we going to do this ministry? Turn the off. Mama Saku restaurant. Mama Nyopi. Asuka Jirimi watu wanagopa kwenda. And then we sit the whole day to plan about this ministry. Amen. And then we think, how can we best give out to Marsabit? We are thinking. So that the body of Christ will be strong. So, that is all, that is my responsibility. You, if you sit here long enough, or be in any class I am teaching, one of the things that I expect after a few months is to see you rise spiritually. And you know, that's why we need your availability here. That's why we need your availability here. Like the things that, the, the teachings that, the programs I've done, which everybody as a member must be present. Number one, Sunday service. That one, you know, you even bring yourself here. Number two, midweek service, Wednesday. The teaching I do on Wednesday, exposition of the books, is purely to build you. Number three, school of discipleship. Like this is now the class which we are doing from two to three. Now we have brought it here. This one is a must. Number four, DBS, Discovered Bible Studies. That one we do it at home level. Last year we stopped it because of the, we were doing it at night and because of this insecurity we were not able to move and the motorbike stopped. Now we have begun DBS yesterday for the for Shoriako people. Now we are going to begin a habari chance to begin down there and also katikati ya hapa pia najua kuna watu wako inabidi yanze And uh, it's very, DBS is very powerful. DBS is very powerful. Some of us have said. So, these four programs have specifically been designed to mature you. Praise the Lord. Let me, let me read for you another chapter that talks about pastors and their work. Chapter 34 of the book of Ezekiel.
Now this one talks so much about pastors, pastors who have malfunctioned. You know what I mean by pastors who have malfunctioned? Them that are not doing their work. God is just tired of them. Chapter 34. Let me read. I do not want to read the whole chapter, but if you read the whole chapter, you find what I am talking about. But I will read some verses that gives us. God is telling the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy against the false shepherds. I think let me even read the whole of it. It's just 31 verses. He says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, War be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? These shepherds do what? They feed themselves. Instead of feeding the flocks. What does that mean? They are giving more attention to themselves. They are there for their stomach. They are not aware of people's needs. They don't care about people whether they are... Look at what it says as you progress on. Yeah. You eat the fat. And you clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed. But you feed not the flock. This, this shepherd feed themselves with the fat. The best portions. They feed themselves with that. And they clothe themselves with wool. You know when you clothe yourself with wool, what it means? And then he says, but you kill them that are fed. But you feed not the flock. So the, f the flock or the people that come to church are not being fed. How are you fed? Fed by the word of God. He says, so that's one of the responsibility of the church, the pastor. Feeding the flock. What is feeding? Teaching. Like what you are now getting. You are a spirit being. You are spirit. And the food you eat is spirit. Your body takes in solid food. That one you are taking care of it yourself. And our responsibility is to feed you spiritually. So that you function well. And then he says in verse 4. The deceased have yet not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away, the lost. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. If somebody comes sick in this church and remains sick, God will ask who? The pastor. If you come here sick and you still stay sick, who has the problem? Me. No, I'm the one who has the problem. You have the problem if you don't come. If you are not available for me, then it is your problem. Because if I teach, it is through the teaching of the word that healing is ministered. If you are too busy for what I am doing inside here, and then you continue with your problem, you cannot blame me. <laughs> when you come here, I teach you how to live. As you take in what I'm teaching, your sickness leaves. You don't even know how it disappears. Huh? You don't know. Even how it disappears. Unakatu unakosa. You see, God is expecting you have not healed the sick. In other words, this responsibility has been given to us to heal the sick. Even when you go to this 
normal shepherds that we have in the, in the villages, when they see an animal has wounds, what do they do? Huh? They give attention to that, look for what can help it. At least they do something. When a pastor does not have ability, this statement might offend some of us, but it's true. If the pastor does not have ability to remove your sickness from you, I, I doubt whether it's called of God. I am serious. God is, what is, he is blaming somebody because people are remaining with sickness. I'm telling you, I doubt if yes. I call. I cannot be put in front of you if I don't have ability to cause what is inside you to grow, to perfect you. And then he says, that those who are have not bound up that which was broken. broken hearted. Or Maisha Gonga kutoka kila kona. Left, right and center. Tuame pata depression. Wakuja tu wakai. It should lift off. Because sometimes we give attention to people who are ailing. Not physically only. Even in their own personal lives. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Or that which was lost. Or sought them that were lost. Mtu amepotea kwa kanisa na pasta ashuguliki. Ata ajuu ya kwa But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. He says. So I think even from those ones you can now see the work of a pastor. Number one is to feed. Number two is to heal. All that you read in verse 4 is about healing. And then that aspect is looking for the lost and bring them back. Looking for the lost. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Because nobody was caring that this passed. Like in today's world, many youths are not in the church. Many youths are not in the church. Not only one church. So many churches around. Youths have disappeared. And nobody cares. So sometimes when I am on your neck every now and then, don't be shocked. Hmm? If, I'm, if I see some problem somewhere, I might come. If you begin receiving my call, I'm not disturbing you. Amen. <laughs> yes, some, some meetings I do like Kesha, I know many of you want to avoid Kesha, Kesha, tukai usiku yote. This this Friday, somebody called me at 4:20. He was in the bar, and then he told me, Pastor, do you want a sinner like me? Hmm? I know his stories. His marriage is broken. Everything is a mess. And then uh, uh, he said, I have gathered courage to call you. I've got that courage to call you because I've been thinking of you. He's been watching on Facebook. And then I told him, come to the meeting. He says, you'll come. Already took my kumbelake. He's already enjoying it. So when he finished the service at 6 that we decided to take supper with him. We went to Pale Pale. And we went to the place he was drinking from right there executive what they call it in there some of you have gone there VIP 
Tutambia kwa VIP. Ameweka ile pombe. Tunaambiwa kwa hiyo room zile pombe zinauzwa pale. Zikitoka kwa hiyo kwa hiyo room zikipika kwa room nyingine hapo kando is skipper. So just be that's the room itself makes the thing expensive. So as we ask for nyama choma and soda. He continues with his as he continues with ours. Then he tells us, don't judge me. I'm also doing you mind. <laughs> so, because he missed that one, I told him we have Kesha. He says, I am coming for Kesha. So we came with him. Najwa Kesha to work with VTV. Vitizote zinasimama kama yo uko nyuma. So, tukanza kukota VTV. Ya kakalia yake, kasema yango, kuna kwa kakuja. Ha <laughs> when is all is connected and the cat open ya when of the maker you took it you it will leave you is all that couple so people are praying akalala kama meka pale ona ndaba by the time ya namka i'm standing here to preach is not very sober i began raising praise and leading praise and worship he was dancing with all of us here and we prayed until 3 This morning he was here. And seated there. I wondered why he's not here. Huh? Amen a conversation. And he said everywhere you go. Yesterday for him lunch hour. Pastor kuna lunch hour leo. Nikamwambia kuna Bible study mali. So nikawapeleka kwa hawa penye tulifanya Bible study. Very actively. And then now I am I'm now a son of this church. Siendi huko. In fact, he's a son of a pastor. Sasa huko siendi. Nakuja wapi? Now we are working on him. Kaingia huko kwa hiyo pendo sio. Akaanza kusema kuna mtu angefaa kwa kwa hii DS. What an idiot. He called somebody within the same compound. And the guy came with his wife. They joined us in the DBS. Sema pastor kuna wengi nitaleta. I don't want to speak the name because some of you know him. <laughs> yeah, but now I am working on him. Little by little. He has to until he comes until that you realize that he will never drink anymore. That's what I can see. He will never go to Pale Pale. I don't know. I don't know. People know me everywhere. I go to Pale Pale to go get pasta. I get any pasta. I get go any pasta. So I don't know any one of them, but they know. I don't know how. So then I can call Kwaile VIP. Then the lady came and asked me talking to me and then the guy was was laughing na mambo unataka kufanya dhambi wewe ni pastor na but see the truth of the matter is now watch that man and he's very genuine he says help me i want to come out of this hall he came out of that hall when he called me there's no day he will ever drink I have said I don't care how many years he has drunk that appetite has dried that day Amen Yeah it has dried And then he gave his mom the phone he called the mom called to go na pasta pa kwa ba Pasta gani pasta don't she she gave them The mom tell, told me afadhali mimi najua umesaidia vijana wengi saidia huyu wangu <laughs> tumesikia story ya vijana wengi uliwarudisha shika huyo pia nikamwambia mama huyu ame sasa ameokoka hiyo shika amen god gives us ability to even to look for the lost and bring them back to himself yes 
This is what we are reading. Looking even for the lost. And bringing them back. Until, huh? I think that's when we saw your son. For the first time, I saw his son. And when he saw me, he's like, wow. He alitengeneza room ingine kando, wakakuja, pasta, tafadhali, kuja, nataku, unayo. And we talked with him at length. So what I'm saying is, uh, I know that we have work. Some of the work we do is that. To feed, to heal, to look for the, the lost. Help me look for the lost, especially believers. Who, them that were born in the church. Now we put Now we are in the church. Let up. A solution here. I'm now announcing it. Bring them here. Like one of them has never gone to church for seven years. And they call him a Christian. And his pastor does not even know. Seven years he has never gone to church. How many years? Seven years. Now the Joa Akikufa and the seven member of church for land. Come and go my eating young girl and young Viachana and you. Come to come your pastor. Cutting in the code and it should be the case. I is in the pack. Yes, sometimes it's painful. So many young people are perishing. So many. One of the responsibility we have as a church is to bring back this one that I lost from the church out there. If you know anybody, refer them here. This guy was referred here. This guy was a refadi. Say that pastor can help you. Baka, unakunywa pombe, unapite simu kiwa kwa kwa. Can you imagine that courage? You are drinking. Na liko kikunyo from Zakumi, baka, ile time to the end of kwa saba. Na samoja usi. Still, ziko pande tu. Ata ameka karibu na sauce. Hapo kwa kaunta hapo. Naziangalia. <laughs> You know, when somebody calls from that point, he never thought I will come. In fact, when I told him I'm coming, he was like, yeah. That's how I put the bill. Then I can say, my bill. My bill is 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 my And uh, he paid for us. Although he wanted to pay, he says, no. We are paying, I am paying it. And then see what you back at Anissa. So to my pigeon. And today is history. As far as I'm concerned, you will never go back there. We had one here, although right now he's not around. He was a terrible drunk. When he began coming here, I can talk about you. I can talk about you. Forget about the place. At the time, Maliko Sana Nawayo Kazema, you may be the piano key, Akoqua, friend Yako, when you're Nakum and I, Akoqua Bafla, Mimi CND, Uko Mimi, or got to the gear up and your is a chapter of the city fungo. Now, whoever would do in Nini Guapa, will it be later? Amen. Yeah, I think that is it for today. Uh, I want to finish at this point. So, we have one.